Hey everybody, Keith Burns with Green Cover here in another of our series of videos with uh, the Climate Smart Commodity Grant uh, opportunities. I've got Matt uh, Durler here with the sorghum growers, and he's going to talk a little bit about uh, what the sorghum growers Climate Smart Commodity Grant has to offer for farmers. So, uh, Matt, go ahead and just introduce yourself. Talk a little bit about you know your role within the organization, and then just share a little bit with us about you know your grant, uh, w the geographic area that it fits into, and what it offers farmers. Sure, uh, happy to be here this morning, Keith. Uh, Matt Durler here. Um, I'm the managing director of Climate Smart Sorghum. Uh, born and raised in Southwest Kansas, just east of Dodge City, uh, on a sorghum and wheat farm here. We run some cattle as well. Uh, spent most of my career in the ethanol industry uh, in operations for a bit and then predominantly on the commercial side between uh, selling co-products and, uh, and handling the value-added grains uh, and, and our carbon programs. And so uh, our Climate Smart Commodities Grant is set up as an inset to ethanol and essentially will cover 200,000 acres a year for the next five years. Um, piloted last year, 23 growers, about 10,000 acres to make sure we understood the ins and outs of how that would flow with uh, the interaction with NRCS and the USDA there um, with, with implementation. So as an inset to ethanol, uh, the, the biggest drivers uh, to carbon intensity is nitrogen efficiency, um, both in terms of fertilizer and in N2O flux from the field. So we focus a lot on uh, climate smart farm practices being no till or reduced till, uh, nitrogen management, and then conservation crop rotation. And uh, what that rotation may, may or may not include a cover. Uh, a lot of times that's a wheat sorghum rotation or wheat sorghum fallow, uh, that sort of thing. So we get some biodiversity with that as well as the benefit uh, of mixing crop species. Uh, but, but the end game here is really to provide that connection from farm practice into the renewable fuels market. Sounds like it's uh, fairly straightforward and, and uh, ha has a lot of benefits there. So is this for sorghum growers anywhere or just a particular set of states? Yeah, so sorghum is a pretty regional crop. If you look at it, uh, you have the coastal bend of Texas and then essentially uh, the Texas panhandle up through Kansas in the bottom part of Nebraska. We do have a little in South Dakota. So the footprint of this grant is the bottom two counties of Nebraska uh over to the eastern two counties in colorado defining our our north and our western border the entire state of kansas the entire state of oklahoma kind of the top third of texas and uh, those easternmost counties in new mexico so a block right here in the heartland yeah. so basically if you're in kind of a sorghum growing region you're probably gonna probably gonna qualify there now do they yeah, have we, we would cover about 85 percent of the sorghum makers in the country okay great do they have to be selling this through an ethanol plant or are there other marketing avenues that would still qualify them? Yeah, no, so uh, our program looks a lot like Equip and TSP. That's a good way to think about it. So this is payment for practice. The grain is not encumbered. Now we are working diligently on the side to provide those free market opportunities that we think will be durable beyond the life of the grant. So working closely with the ethanol plant, um, as we talk about uh, clean fuels production credits, heavily engaged in the 45Z discussion, try yep. to have that pathway where these climate smart practices can count into ethanol production, but the grain's not encumbered. Uh, so uh, while, while we're working heavily in the renewable fuel space, we're talking with food companies, just trying to provide opportunities for those producers uh, that would add value on top of this, and then hopefully be things that would survive beyond the five years of the program. Okay, so it's a five-year program. So if I sign up, I, am I in it for all five years, or is it like one year at a time, and I can renew if I want to, or how does that work? Yeah, so um, kind of the handshake commitment is that we would like producers to be in for all five years, but it is a series of five one-year contracts, uh, and then that's predominantly because of the fact that since we tie, tied a farm track and field uh, and sorghum's rotation crop, there's very little. Uh, continuous sorghum planted usually it's in conjunction with another crop so it'll move around the farm so we, we, we enroll the actual planted acres each year uh, and for most farmers we'll cap out at about 500 acres 450 something like that uh, because we, we do have a twenty five thousand uh, dollar payment limit per year per okay. farmer uh, and, and, and unless you qualify it's historically underserved and then there's a 15 percent increase there but the general practices they're going to be kind of between 40 and 60 dollars an acre for most producers Okay, great. And, and is there, do, do these have to be new practices that are being implemented or can they be a continuation of existing practices? 
they can be a continuation of existing practices. Probably the place where we see the most uh, adoption of new practices in our program is around the nitrogen management and the precision NCs as they start to understand not only are they saving money through efficiency there, but the, the impact that has on carbon intensity. Uh, but we have a lot of uh, historical no-till farmers that are bringing those practices in and then trying to get a little better with fertilizer utilization. That's probably the predominant piece. But as we look at that inset play, you know, really telling the story of the efficiency of production agriculture is a big part of this. And then collecting enough broad data over time to make informed decisions for the regulated fuel markets, as well as the things that may work through the green model. Okay. And I know this is a question that farmers are always going to ask, you know, do they still have ownership and control over their data or is that, do they lose control over that? Yeah. So it, it remains the producer's data. The only way that data is shared, uh, obviously it's shared with the USDA, but anything beyond that is only shared in aggregate uh, should it come to the modeling um, outside of this. So no individual data. Now we do believe there's going to be opportunities for producers to monetize the data we're collecting and we're trying to help them uh, modernize their record keeping in a lot of cases, uh, but provide those opportunities, be it through a, a 45Z kind of program or potentially something even from um, what one of the uh, agronomic companies looking for interactions between a herbicide and a feed variety, th those sorts of things. So uh, we, we think uh, every time I'm in front of a, Bruce, a group of producers, I tell them whether they like it or not, we're in the data business now. Yeah, It's it just their decision of what they want to do with that. Yeah. But uh, as we get better with data, we make more informed decisions and uh, the, the companies to telling us inputs can make better informed decisions as well if we want to participate in those markets, but completely up to the grower. Yeah. So it sounds like it's a good, good entryway for people to get in, start collecting this data. And then, you know, this could be a launching point for additional programs down the road. Sure. We, we sure see it that way. So as national uh, sorghum producers, we have about 5,000 members across the country. And really our goal here with the program is to try to meet at least 80% of our producers where they are today. You know, there's some people that are pretty advanced in their record keeping and bring it directly off of their equipment, uh, where there's some shoebox farmers as well. So we've partnered with Farmer's Edge uh, to be able to bring in that, tele that telematic information where we can, but also be able to upload manual data, whether that's coming from FSA or something that they have just uh, in invoices and spreadsheets to get that data in a place that's usable. And then it's up to them, where do they want to go from there? We have seen a, a good bit of engagement, particularly there are younger people coming back to the farm and people believe there's an opportunity to upgrade their data systems. They're going ahead and taking that leap to say, this is an opportunity to kind of forge a new frontier for the, for the operations. Yeah. Well, sounds good. Talk just uh, real briefly here in closing about what does that application process look like? Is it uh, take a long time? Uh, is it, something where you help the farmers apply or what, what does that look like? Yeah, so uh, all of our uh, application is through direct contact. You can go to our website at sorghumgrowers.com uh, and slash Kramit Smart uh, and, and, and find the sign up form. Uh, that'll get you to, to me or one of our grower representatives. Um, really, it's a, a quick onboarding to go through what kind of practices are you implementing on the farm today? Uh, do you have any existing contracts with CSP or Equip? We want to make sure we're not double dipping those, obviously. And then making sure they understand the data burden. The, the data burden is significant as we need three years of historical records to form the baseline with which we, we move forward. But uh, the, the actual sign-up process is pretty quick uh, if, if growers qualify and, and they're interested. And then, uh, you know, through the growing season, they can provide us with that historical data. And if, if they sign up online there, we'll get them in touch with one of our grower reps. We have about 10 scattered throughout the region that'll work directly with them and then uh, show up on form when, when, when appropriate. All right. Well, that sounds like that's uh, doable for most people and you're not going into this alone. You're going to have some assistance in, in helping you through it if it's, uh, you know, uh, a program that you think is for you. So, uh, again, one last time, just go to what website to get the, the process started? Uh, sorghumgrowers.com slash climate smart and we'll try to post that in the in the comments here too as we put this out for people to watch so matt thank you so much for taking the time to share a little bit about your program and it sounds like it's something that can really help farmers uh, thanks keith